What color temperature should you set your video lights to? It seems like an easy to answer newbie type question, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I suppose so, but start scratching beneath the surface and it becomes more complex and there's lots to consider. For example, the way that color temperature impacts mood, what it does to your background, how it affects color rendition, and what about skin tones? Once I had this idea in my head, I had to get it out. I had to investigate, make a video for you guys. So, you know, here's what happened. What color temperature should you set your video lights to? As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip around to the bits you want, no problem at all. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers. So it would really mean a lot to me if you could take the time to reach down and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Really helps the channel puts a smile on my face and I appreciate it in advance. I thank you. This is also not sponsored content. I don't do sponsored content, uh, but these videos are made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel, I buy gear, I review it in an unbiased way and then I give the gear to my backers. If that's of interest, do you know check it out. It's all down below. It's inexpensive and it helps me out. To clarify, I'm talking specifically about the color temperature of your key light and then the changes from your other lights and the impact that that can have. And all throughout, I'm gonna be doing a custom white balance to my key light to kind of, uh, to compensate for any uh, any weirdness and, you know, so that my camera knows uh, what's meant to be correct. I have also done a video about how to set a custom white balance. If you've not done that before, uh, I will link that below as well. You can find anything linked, anything mentioned in this video. It will all be down below. So for this setup, I'm actually using a three light setup. I've got my key light up here. I've got a fill light over there and you may be able to see just over my hair, I've got a hair light set up as well. They are all bicolor lights and go from a range of 2700 Kelvin all the way to 65. And the three main color temperatures that I'm gonna be hitting with these three lights are uh, 2700, so really warm, 5500, and then 6500, which is the coolest. Why not 4300, some of you might be saying. Well, I figure, you know, I needed an, a, a point in between and 5500 is just so commonly used. So I, I think that's a better kind of benchmark for the middle point even though it's pretty close to 6,500. And in case you're wondering about specifically which lights I'm using, which models, I'm actually using an entirely uh, Zheyun light setup. I've got the G300 for my key light that I reviewed really recently and loved. The B300 as my fill light, which I will be reviewing soon. And then my hair light is the G60, which also I've reviewed. These are all linked below. So first, let me just show you the test clips of what I came up with. First up, we have my standard setup with all of the lights set to 5500 Kelvin. It's very balanced, very familiar, and I would say my background lights, the LED lights and the Edison bulb look normal to me. So this is my benchmark. Now let's move on and do something different. So next I left my fill light and my hair light on 5500 and changed my key light to 2700 really warm tungsten lights. And then I did a custom white balance on my camera. It really cools things down as my camera now thinks that the tungsten light is normal, so to speak. And then I did the opposite. I left my fill and hair light on 5500 and set my key light to 6500, so really cool. And of course, I did a custom white balance, and this has had the opposite effect. It makes everything seem just so much warmer. Of course, you can take this warm look even further by setting the fill and hair light to, I don't know, 4300 Kelvin, for example. But just with this, I really like the look we've got. Just going back to our original benchmark shot where all the lights are set to 5500, and I wanted to see what would happen if I changed all of them to the other extreme color temperatures and then again do the custom white balance on the camera. So here's 5500 Kelvin and then here I've set all the lights to 2700, super warm and of course I've done the custom white balance. I'm going to compare these properly in just a bit but I just wanted to show you what this looks like. And then I did the opposite, I set all the lights to the coolest I could which of course is 6500 Kelvin. These three look fairly similar on the surface but there are noticeable differences when we 
we look at them side by side. Next, I wanted to try some more extremes. So in this example, my key light is set to 6500 Kelvin, my fill light to 2700, and then my hair I've left at 55. And then I flip them around again and set my key light to 2700, my fill light to 6500, and again, left my hair light to 55. And of course, I have done a custom white balance using our key light as the reference. So with these in mind, let's talk about mood. So clearly there can be lots of different moods achieved by mixing and changing our color temperatures. And a good place to start is this shot with my key light at 2700 and my fill light at 6500 Kelvin. And whilst this certainly doesn't work for my kind of videos, to me, this really does look like day to night. Especially when we lower the exposure slightly, it looks like moonlight is spilling in from the window on camera left. And maybe a hallway door is just open with the light spilling through through onto the left side of my face. Really cool. And then we have this shot where my key light was set to a really cool 6500 and the rest of my lights left at a slightly warmer 5500 Kelvin. This has had entirely the opposite effect. If anything, it looks like it's summertime, which as it happens, it is at the time of filming, but my blinds are closed, so you shouldn't be able to tell. Going one step more extreme, and we have our keys still set to 6500, but our fill set all the way to 2700 Kelvin. And this gives me the impression that maybe I'm sat beside a fireplace if, you know, the beam angle of my fill light was a little bit lower, and I had that kind of flickering you get from a real fireplace. But that's the mood that I'm getting from this shot. Next, I wanted to see the impact that all of these can have on your background. Let's do it. A real impact of changing the color of your key light can have is of course the perception of the color temperature of your background lights. I'd say this is less important for YouTube, but you know, if you're filming something with a bit more narrative perhaps that actually uses practical lights, then this is incredibly important. We have a really nice example here with all of my lights set to 2700 Kelvin, warm tungsten, and keep your eye on my Edison bulb just over my left shoulder. Now in reality, that bulb is really, really warm, but of course in this case, it appears way more cool. Switching to having all of my lights at 6500 Kelvin, really cool, and you can see the opposite effect. That Edison bulb looks extremely warm, and of course this is actually far closer to how it looks in reality. And really just to emphasize this, here they are side by side, it's far easier to tell the difference when you can see them next to each other. Big difference. Moving on now to color accuracy, and lately I've been thinking a lot about um, CRI and TLCI as, as kind of accuracy measurements and how just really outdated they are and they're not um, they're just not suited to you know today's cameras and compared to some of the other measurements that you can find out there like TM30 or uh, SSI for example they're, they're just not that great and the one that I would actually like to see more of from manufacturers is SSI which is spectral similarity index and that compares the light source to a really well-known um, perfect light source such as the sun. The first thing to note here is the variance in brightness when I set my lights to the different temperatures and this is really common with bicolor lights. The peak brightness will usually be at a certain color temperature and in this case the brightest was at 6500 Kelvin and then they got less bright the more tungsten we got. You will have noticed that I showed a color chart on each clip and whilst I can't do a analysis on this just because you know th these are not lab conditions and there are too many variables I still thought it would be interesting to look at them side by side and I'm not sure what to make of this there are just too many differences in brightness but if you notice something from this and you get something from it please let me know so extremely tricky I know but the reason I wanted to do that is because when you do see SSI ratings on uh, light specs websites on, on online um, Aperture have actually been really good at publishing these when you do see these, so often the results are far better at the tungsten end of the color temperature scale. So um, I was curious. However, it's far easier for us as human beings to notice hue differences in skin tones. We are visually dominant mammals, and this means it's gonna be far more obvious when we see people with, you know, if someone's blushing or flushed face, or if someone's unwell or, let's say, you know, they've kind of gone pale as if they're going to faint. 
let's investigate. So here they are side by side and 65 and 5500 Kelvin look really similar to me and that's presumably because they are close in terms of color temperature with 2700 Kelvin being by far the outlier because you know look how much more magenta my skin tones are. Now it would be easy at this point just to draw a conclusion and say well 2700 is clearly the worst because you know it's the odd one out but that's not scientific not that this video is particularly scientific but we do have a tool that we can use to help us with this. It's something I did a video about recently actually and it's from my plugin producer buddy Eric who makes amazing plugins and lookup tables and these were lookup tables that help you determine whether your skin tone hues are correct or not and I will link to that review it's definitely worth watching but let's apply that lookup table now and see what we're working with and here they are the key here is we want to see as much yellow as possible that indicates perfect if we see more magenta that means there's too much red in our skin tones and if we see green it means there's too much green we're seeing lots of magenta on the tungsten shot so clearly the eye test is correct, we all knew that. And again, between the other two, it's close. I think I can see more yellow on the 5500 Kelvin version, but it's really close. Either way, they're doing well on the skin tone hue test. However, I would say this is actually not telling us anything useful because all this tells us is that on this day with the settings I used, with the lights I used and the custom white balances that I got, the tungsten setting was not quite as good as the others. On a different day with different gear, different lighting and maybe with a slightly different white balance calibration, it could be the complete opposite. But I would say this is something that's worth investigating for yourself if you have bicolor lights it's worth just seeing which you think looks the best for skin tones. I would recommend once again checking out my video on Eric's false colour lookup tables. They're inexpensive, they haven't left my grading chain since I got these, I just stick them at the end and switch them on and off to check things and the, yeah, as I said, they're inexpensive and also I managed to get you a code if you're interested in snapping them up or anything else that he does. Just use the code HARV, H-A-R-V, at the checkout and uh, you'll get a tasty discount. You are welcome. Finally, I want to gather up everything from this video and grind it up and make a tasty espresso of conclusions and tips to take away. The mood side of things is really quite subjective. I actually don't have a grand conclusion with regard to the impact that mixing temperatures can have, except to say that having multiple bicolor light setups open a world of possibilities and deserves experimentation. I personally loved the look of 6500 Kelvin for my key light and then setting my fill and hair light to 5500. This way, the majority of my skin tones look normal, but with just some summery looking warm fill. Which did you like? As for the background, really the only effect on the background that using different temperatures has is the look of other practical lights. This does take some consideration. For example, if I were shooting indoors with a window in the background, I would certainly set my lights to the coolest possible temperature so that any light coming from outside doesn't look too cool. And then on to color accuracy, and all I'll say on this subject is do check your light specs to see if it has SSI measurements. If it does, and if it rates as okay overall, say one of the readings is 80 or higher, then there's a good chance it'll actually be significantly better when set to tungsten. And that could be a consideration if color rendition is super important to you. On to skin tones, and this is not advice, but with my setup, I got the best results at 5500 Kelvin. That doesn't mean it'll be the same for you and your setup, but it does highlight that doing a little test with your lights isn't the worst idea. So overall, I would say be sure to do a custom white balance using your key light as the reference. This means that arguably the most important light fixture in your setup will be nice and balanced. There are exceptions to this rule, of course. And so to sum up, and I am so glad I ran these tests and I didn't get the results that I was expecting. And that is a great thing. I thought that using more of the tungsten side of the color temperature spectrum would give me more flattering results on skin tones. I thought that that warmer color might be good for sort of concealing blemishes and just have a, a positive effect on my skin tones. But alas, there was no visible difference from what I could tell. In fact, 
as you saw, the tungsten version was actually more, it gave me a more magenta look, which is definitely less accurate compared to what my skin tone looks like in real life. So I am so happy to be wrong. You know, and these kind of videos where, you know, I have an idea, I test it and then show you my results and we all kind of learn together. These are the bedrock of content for this channel. And honestly, if you guys have ideas for other avenues I could explore and if I can help, I will. Anyway, that's all for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Do you agree? Did I miss something? What would you do differently? I want to know and I'll see you down in the comments section. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a better video.